In this video, we are going to create a wallet app design using React Native and TypeScript. The design will be based on these UIs that I found on Dribbble. And by the end of the video, you have a feel of how to use TypeScript for a React Native project. To follow along with me, you need a TypeScript based React Native project, which you can easily create by running Expo in it and choosing the blank TypeScript template. With that out of the way, we start with the welcome screen. Our screens will be in the screens directory and we'll make use of components in the component directory. For the styling of our work, we'll make use of styled components and this requires us to install styled components and the types that it comes with. Now inside the components directory, we'll create a colors file. This will house all the colors that we'll use throughout the project. Also, we need a shared file, which will store the components that will be used by all other components. In this file, the first thing we'll do is to import styled components and create a container based on view. We'll give it a flex of one to fill the entire screen, align the items in it to the center, and then import our colors so that we can use the white one for the background. Also, we want to fetch the dimensions for our current screen so that we'll use it for some styling. For this, the dimensions components from React Native will help us. For the width of our screen, we'll call the get method on dimensions, which will take an argument of screen and then we can target the width property. For the height of our screen, we'll do the same, but we'll target the height instead. Now to be able to access these components outside, we have to ensure that we export all of them. Now in our welcome screen file, we import React and function components from React, the status bar and also styled components. The function component is a type that we are assign to our components, which will let TypeScript know what to expect from them. So we create a function for the welcome screen and pass function component as the return type and we export it as the default and put the status bar in it and style it to be light. Now in the root app file, we import the welcome screen and return it as the output of the app. Now we create a styled component and call it welcome container. This will be based on the initial container component that we created in the shared file. So we import it as well. The first thing we'll do is to change the background color to the secondary color in our colors. We will justify the content to be spaced between and give it a height and width of 100%. Now below the status bar, we can put our welcome container. Now inside the welcome container, we'll have two sections, a top and a bottom section, which will create styled components for as well. The top section will have a width of 100%, a flex of 1, and a maximum height of 55% of the screen height. The bottom section will also cover the entire width of the screen and have some padding in it. The flex value will also be 1 so that you have the same size as the top section. Inside the welcome container, we can put our new components there. Now the contents of the top section will be an image. So we'll create a component for it and call it top image. This will be based on the styled image component. This will also have a width and height of 100%, which means that when we use it, it will cover the entire width and height of the top section. We'll give it a resize mode of stretch, which will also ensure that when we use it, it will stretch and cover the whole container. Now the actual image we'll be using will be in the backgrounds directory under assets. This is how the first image looks like. Now on the welcome screen, we'll import the image, which we'll then go ahead to use by passing it as a source value to the top image component. But now as you can see, TypeScript is not happy with our image import. So to fix this, we need to declare our images as models. So in the root of our project, we'll create a file and call it photo.d.ts. Giving it .d.ts extension will let TypeScript know that it is a declaration file. Inside the file, we'll first declare model as all.png. And this will have a value of type any, and also the export will be equal to the value. This will ensure that TypeScript is happy with any PNG file that we import. And I will do the same for the JPEG files as well. Now sometimes, it takes a while for TypeScript to recognize these kind of changes. So a quick way around it will be to close the editor and open it once again. In most cases, this should resolve the issue. Now in the bottom section of our page, we will need some text components. But for the components in this project, we want to make them as much reusable as possible. So in the components directory, we'll create another directory and call it text. The first component will be a small text component. As the name implies, we will use it when we need smaller size text. So this will be a function component as well. Now inside the component, we'll need a styled component which we will call styled text. We'll give it a font size and also the gray color in our text. After that, we align it to the left. Now instead of the default font, we want to use some custom ones. So I have the little bold and regular font that I downloaded from Google Fonts. In the project, they will reside in the fonts directory under assets. So to be able to use the font, we need to install Expo font and Expo app loading. Now in the root app file, we import app loading and also the use font hook from Expo font. Now in the app component, we'll make use of the use font hook 
to declare our font families. And let's we'll return a font loaded Boolean property. If the font loaded is not true, we'll return the uploading component. Otherwise, we'll just return our welcome screen. Now back in the small test component, we can now use the font family that we declared. Now to make this test component reusable, we need to accept some properties. And because of TypeScript, we need to assign types to them. So still inside the text directory, we'll create another file and call it types. Inside the types file, we import some types from React and also React Native. Now we'll create an export and interface, which we'll call test props. The first property will be text styles. This will be an optional property and it will have the type of style prop, which will take a variable of text style. So with this, we are telling TypeScript that the text styles property will accept some styling. And in particular, the styling will be related to a text component. The next property will be children, and that will be a React node. And this will refer to the content that will pass when we are using the text component. Done with that, we go back to the small text component and import the text props. Now we'll pass the text prop as a variable to the function component, which will define the types for our properties. And we're taking the properties using the props parameter. Now the text styles property will be assigned to the style component of our text. And we'll pass the children as the content of the text component. Now let's create a regular text and a big text component, which will be similar to the small text. Inside the big text component, we'll change the font size, the color, the font family, and also the name of the component. Everything else will stay the same. For the regular text as well, we change the font size and the family, and also the name of the component. Now back on the welcome page, we import the big text and the small text. In the bottom section component, we'll use the big text and put some text in it. Now we'll change the width and also give it some margin at the bottom through the text styles property. We'll also use the small text and give it some styling. Now the next thing we need is a button. And once again, we'll go to the components directory and create a buttons directory. In the buttons directory, we'll create a file for regular button. This will also be a React function component. Now we we'll need the already existing colors and also our regular text component. The first thing we'll do is to create a button view, which will be a touchable opacity. We'll align the contents of the button to the center, give it a background color, and also some padding and a border radius. This will make the edges rounded a bit. Now inside the component, we we'll make use of the button view. And inside the button view, we we'll use our regular text component. Now once again, to make this reusable, we need to accept some properties. And we have to type them using TypeScript. But we'll not be having a lot of buttons here. So we can declare the types in this same file. This will require us to make some imports from React Native. The first property will be an optional button styles. It will be a style property targeting views in particular. The next one will be an unpressed property, which will be a function to be called when the button is pressed. And this property will have a type of a function or undefined. The function will have the parameter of event, which will also have a type of gesture responder event, and it will return void. In the button component, we will pass the unpressed property to the button view, since that is the touchable opacity. Also, it will receive the button styles property as the style. The regular text will also accept the text styles property and also take the children as the content. Whenever you are confused about the type to use for your properties, you can just hover on the property and the TypeScript intelligence in VS Code will give you an idea of the type to use. As you can see here, the suggested type is exactly what I used. So finally, back on the welcome page, we can use the regular button here too. The button will have a value of get started and for the unpressed property, we'll populate it later. Now I want the content in the bottom section to shift closer to the bottom of the screen. So in the bottom section component, I'll give it a justify property of flex end, which will push the content to the end of the screen. Now at this point, if you have any question in mind, you can leave it as a comment and I'll reply to it. Now the next thing we need to do is to set up navigation with some extra types. We need to install the native React navigation model and some extra dependencies. Also, we need to install the stack navigator and its dependencies. With that out of the way, we create a navigator's directory and a root stack file. Now, the root stack will also be a function component. And the first component it needs is the navigation container. Also, we need a create stack navigator function, which we'll use to create the stack. Now, we need to type the stack navigator. So, we we'll create a type and call it root stack param list. This will declare the screens that we have and the parameters that each screen is expecting. For now, we have a welcome screen and the screen expects nothing, so the type will be undefined. Once we have that, we can pass the root stack param list as a type to the create stack navigator. Now, this list will be used outside the component, so we need to export it. Back in the root stack component, we use the navigation container and inside it, we will create a stack navigator. Inside the stack navigator will be the screens and the first one will be the welcome screen. 
So the stack the screen component to have a name of welcome and we need to import the welcome component which will pass as the component. Now inside the root app file, we need to import the root stack navigator so that we use it in place of the welcome screen. Once you've done that, you should be able to see the output of the stack. Now back in the root stack file, we don't want the header for our welcome screen. So in the options, we'll set header shown to false. Now the works for our next screen, which is the home screen, will start in the root stack file. But let's create the home screen component and come back. So in the home file, we set up a home function component. And the root item we need to be a home container component, which we will create based on the container component from our shared file. This will have a grey light color from our colors, a width of 100% and also a flex of 1, so that it will fill the entire screen. Now I'll return the home container component and for the first child we'll put the status bar with a style of dark. Now we'll go back to our root stack file to proceed. Back in the root stack component, we import the home component that we just created. And inside the stack navigator, we'll create a screen for the component. Now to see the output of this, we'll set the initial route name property of the stack navigator to the home screen. If it doesn't show right away, then you need to refresh the app to see the output. Now we target the screen options property of the stack navigator which will help us to style the header. The first property will be the header style and we'll change the background color to gray light from our colors. This means that we should import the colors from our component. Now the current header has a border at the bottom that we want to get rid of. So we set the width of the bottom border to zero, the shadow color to transparent and the shadow opacity to zero. On Android, this will have no effect on the look of the header. So we add an elevation of zero to fix that. The elevation also have no effect on the header when used on iOS. Finally, we give it a height of 120 pixels. Now, if the border doesn't disappear, once again, you can refresh to fix that. Next, we'll target the header tint color. And this will be the color of the items in the header. And for that, we'll give you the secondary color in our colors. Now, for the actual content of the header, we want to change them to some custom components. So in the components directory, we'll create another directory and call it header. Inside the header, we'll create a profile and a greeting file. Inside the greeting file, we'll set up a basic function component. Now this greeting component will display two values. We'll call the first one a main text and the other a subtext. So we need to create a type for that and we'll use an interface here. Our main text and subtext will both be strings and we want to accept styling for each of them. So we accept a main text styles property, which will be optional and it will be a style property targeting the text in particular. So we import the style prop and the text style types from React Native. Now the subtext styles will be similar to this. Once you have the type, we pass it to the function component and we'll take in props as a parameter. Now the first thing our greeting will return is a view, so we'll create a styled view for that. This will have a flex of 1 and a flex direction of column. We want the text content in it to be in a column format. We also justify the content to the center as well. Now for the text that we'll be displaying, we'll make use of the text components that we created. So we import the regular text and the small text here. So in the greeting component, we return the styled view and the first child will be the regular text. And the value of the regular text will be the main text value from our props. We will give it some initial styling through the text styles property. We will give it a color and a font size, so we should have the colors imported. Now because you are also accepting some styles for the main text, we will convert this to an array so that we will be able to add the main text styles we received. Now the small text component will be something similar. But for this, we just give it a color and add the received styles. The content of the text will also be the subtext property. Now in the profile component, we set up a function component as well. This profile component will house an avatar image that will be displayed in the top right corner. For this, we'll first create a styled view component and this will be a touchable opacity. This will also have a flex of column, a height and a width of 45 pixels and also a border radius of 15. We want it to be a square with 300 corners. The next component will be a styled image, which will be based on the image component. The first thing we'll give it is a resize mode and we'll set it to cover. It will have a width and a height of 100 pixels to fill the styled view. And we'll also give it a border radius of 15 to match the styled view. Now in the profile, we'll return the styled view, which will have the styled image as a child. For the properties that we are expecting, we'll create an interface for that too. The first property will be the image, and it will have a type of image source prop type. This will be imported from React Native. Now while we are here, we need to import some extra types that we will need. The next property will be an optional image style. This will contain direct styles for our image, so to be a style prop targeting the image in particular. The next one will be the image container style. This will be a style for the view around our image, so to be a style prop targeting the view in particular. Lastly, we need an optional on press property, and this will be a function or undefined, which will be triggered when the image is pressed on. 
This will take an event with a gesture responder event as we've seen in the earlier components. Now we pass the unpressed and the image container style to the styled view and also the image style and the actual image to the styled image. Now back in the root style file and in the options property of the home screen, we provide the header title and the value of this will be a function. The function accepts the props parameter and the return value will be the greeting component that we created. So we need to import it from our component. In addition, we import the profile as well. Now using the greeting, we'll give it a main text property and a subtext property. Also, we spread the received properties on the greeting. Now on the home screen, we want the left side of the header to be empty. That is, we don't want the back button to be displayed. So we set the header left property to a function which returns an empty fragment. Now the right side of the header will be our profile. But because this will be the same for the subsequent screen, we want to avoid any repetition. So we set the header right property in the stack navigator instead. This will be a function with the return value of the profile. Now this profile expects an image. And for that, I'll add an avatar image to the AVI directory under assets. Once I've done that, I import it here to be used as the image. In addition to the image, I want to style the container of the profile. For this, I want to set the background color to the tertiary color. Now I want to add some paddings to the header containers. Starting with the right one, I want to give it a padding right of 25 pixels so that there will be more space between the profile and the edge of the screen. For the left container too, I want to give it a padding left of 10 pixels. This will also give us some more space on the left. Now to proceed, we go to the home screen file. The next item that we'll add is the card section and we'll create a component for that. So in the components directory, we create another directory for cards. The first component we'll create is the card section which will be the entire section of our UI where we display the cards. Inside the file, we'll create a function component for the card section. Now the card section will be made up of cards that we want to display. So to do that, we'll make use of the flat list. Using styled components, we can start the flat list. We'll give it a weight of 100% and a flex of 1. Also we'll give it a pattern on the left side and also the bottom. We will not give it any pattern on the right side. This is because we want the card to flow to the edge of the screen and not be cut off. Now to implement the card section, we need some types for our properties. But these types will be shared by multiple components. So we'll create a types file. Now in the types file, we'll first create and export the interface card props. This will be the properties that a typical card will have in our project. So to have an ID, an account number and a balance. Also to have an alias which will be an optional name for the card. And also we have a logo for the card which will be an image source. So we need to import that from React Native. Now the next interface is the card section props. This will have a property of data, which will be an array and we pass the card props type to it. What we've done here means that the data will be an array of cards and each card in the array will have the properties of the card props. Now back in the card section, we import the card section props from the types. With that imported, we pass it to the function component and take in the props. Now the function will return the card list component, which is the flat list. This will take a property of data and will set the value as the data from our props. We want this to scroll horizontally, so we set horizontal to true. Now we don't want to show the scroll indicator, so we set that to false. Now the flat list comes with a container, so we want to style that as well. We just give it a pattern and align the items to the center. Now each item that will be in the flat list needs a key. So we use the key extractor here. This will take a function that has access to the items in the data. So for each item in the data, we will destructure the ID and to have a type of any. Once we have that, We'll convert the ID to string to be used as the key. Now the last property is render item. This will receive a component that will be rendered for each item in the data. So for that, we'll create another component. So still in the cards directory, we'll create a card item component. The card item will be a function component. And for the types of the properties, we import the card props from the types, which we assign to the function component and then we can take in the props. Now the card background is the first component that we need on this page. This will be an image background. And we'll give it a height of 75%. For the width, we'll make use of the width dimensions that we declared in the shared file. For that, we'll multiply the value by 0.67 so that the width will be 67% of the actual screen width. We'll give it a resize mode of color and a background color. So we need to import the colors as well. Now we'll give it a border radius and a margin at the right side. Also, we set overflow to hidden. Now after the background, we need a touchable component. So for this one, we'll call it card touchable and then to be based on the touchable highlight. This will have a height of 100% and also a border radius of 25 pixels. Also, we need a touchable view, which we use to organize the items on the card. We will justify the content to have a space between them and also align the items to the center. 
will give it a pad and also a flex of one to occupy the size of the whole card. Now for the content on the card, we will need rows for that. So we'll create a card row. This will have a flex direction of row. And also we add a space between the content. And also we want to align the items in the center. And finally, we give it a weight of 100%. The last thing we need is the logo on the card. And for that, it will be an image. This will have a weight of 100% and a height of 80%. We'll set the resize mode to contain and also a flex of one. Now the first component to be used to be the card background. And this will take a source value, which will be an image. So for this, I'll use an image which is mostly transparent and has a few colors around it, which will give me the look that I'm going for. So import the image and use it. The next component that we'll use is the card touchable. This is the touchable highlight and it will need an underlay color. For this, we'll pass the secondary color from our colors. It will also take an unpressed property, which should point to a function. For that, we'll just declare it and implement it later. Now inside the card touchable, we use the touchable view. This will wrap the actual data on the card. And for the data on the card, we'll display it in two rows. So we'll make use of the card row component twice. To be able to see the output of what we've done so far, let's go back to the card section. In the card section file, we add the render item function to the card list. From the function parameter, we can destructure the current item and this will have a type of any as well. This will return the card item component that we are still implementing. So we import that and use it. For the item that we destructured in the parameter, we'll spread it on the card item. Now because we don't have any card data yet, we'll not see any output. So let's go to the home screen and initialize some data for the card. Back on the home screen, we import the card section component. Once we've done that, inside the home component, we'll create a card data array, which contains objects with data that we expect from our card. The data for the cards requires us to provide logos. So for that, I have some logos in the cards directory under assets, which I will import and use. Once we have that, we use the cards section component and we use the values through the data property. Doing this should give us the initial output of our cards. Back in the card item component, we can go ahead to display the text. In the first card row, we use the regular text. So we import our regular text and the small text component. Now the value of this will be the account number, which we will get from the properties. But we don't want to display the full number. So make use of the slice method here. The slice method will take a start index and an ending one. So we'll pass it 6 and 10 so that we'll grab the last four digits of the number. Now we'll precede the value with 6 asterisks to make up for the missing numbers. Now we'll give the text the color of white through the textiles property. In the next card row, we'll need a regular view from React Native. Using the view, we'll give it a flex value of 3. And the next component we'll use below the view is the logo. This logo will have a source value as the logo from the props. Now the logo has a flex value of 1. This means that we giving the adjacent view a flex value of 3 will ensure that the view will take up 3 times the space of the logo. Now inside the view, we'll make use of our small text here. And the value of the small text will be total balance. We'll start the text a bit more by giving it a margin at the bottom and also changing the color to gray light. Right under the text, we'll make use of the regular text component to display the actual balance. Once again, we'll style it more by changing the font size to 19. Now we move to the transaction section. So inside the components directory, we create a directory for transactions. Now just like the card section we just completed, we will need data for the transactions. So this time around, we can start by creating our types. So we we'll create a types file. In the file, we'll first create our transaction properties. That is the details that we expect from each transaction. Most of the details will be string properties, with the exception of the ID. Now the art property will be an object of an icon and a background. The icon here will be an icon name that you can find in the expo vector icons. And the background will just be a color for the background of the icon. The next interface will be the transaction section properties. This will take a data property, which will be an array of transactions. So the type of the array will be transaction props. Now the art for each transaction will be a component on its own. So I'll create a type for it and call it transaction avi props. This will contain the icon and the background. Now under transactions, we'll first create the transaction section. This will once again be a function component. And the type for the parameters will be the transaction section props from the types. Once we have that, we can take in the props as a parameter. Now we put our colors and also the regular text and the small text. Now we'll create a background for our transaction section, which will be a view. This will have a weight of 100% and will give it a horizontal pattern. Also, we'll give it some padding at the top and also a flex of 2. If you remember, we gave the card section of our screen a flex property of 1. So now the transaction will take twice as much the space of the card section. The next component will be a row for each transaction. 
So we'll call it transaction row. This will have a flex direction of row and also for the content in the row with space between them. Also, we align the items vertically in the center of the row and give it a width of 100%. To render the list of transactions, we'll use a flat list. We'll just give this a width of 100%. Now in the component, we'll first return the background. Next, we'll create a row for the transaction header and we'll style this to have a margin bottom of 25 pixels. Now in the row, the first item will be a regular test and this will contain transaction as the test. We'll give it some further styling by changing the font size and the color. Now the next item in the row will be a small text and we'll also style it to have a color of secondary. The content will be recent and also we can add the little carrot icon. For the icon, we can import iron icons from Expo Vector icons. The name of the icon is carrot down and we'll give it a size and also a color of gray dark. To see the output of this, let's go to the home component and import the transaction section. So below the cast section, we'll put our transaction section. Now because of the types that we assigned to the transaction section, we need to provide some data to it. So I'll create a variable and call it transaction data and I'll assign to it an array of objects containing dummy data. But the structure of the data should be the same as the types for the transactions. Once we have that, we can pass it to the transactions through the data property. Now back in the transaction section, we'll create our list. For the data property, we'll pass it the data from the props. Also, this will be a vertical list. So we disable the option to show the scroll indicator. Now for the style of the content container, we'll give it a pattern bottom of 25 pixels. Also from the data, we need to extract the key for each item. So for that, we'll target the ID value, just like how we did for the cast section. Now the next property will be the item to render for each item. So for that, we'll create another component and call the transaction item. Inside the transaction item file, we'll create a function component. Also, we will need our colors, the regular text and the small text. Over here, we also need the transaction rule. So we can copy the one we have in the transaction section file. The only addition we'll make is to add a margin bottom of 25 pixels. Now in a row, we'll have a left view and a right view. So we'll create components for that, starting with the left view. This will have a flex direction of row and will justify the content to the start of the view. So all the items will be closer to the left side of the view. Also, this will have a height of 100%. And also the items will be aligned vertically in the center of the view and will give it a flex of 2. Now the right view will only have a flex of 1. So just like we said earlier, the left view will now be twice the size of the right view. Now for this transaction item, the types will be the same as the transaction props that we defined earlier. So we import that from types. Once we have that, we pass it to the function component and we take in the props. Now in the component, we return a transaction rule and this will have a left view and the right view. In the left view, the first component will be the art for the transaction. And to make it easier to display that, we'll create another component for that. In this file, we'll set up a function component. And for this component, the type will be the transaction AVI props that we declared. In this file, the first component that we create is a styled view. We'll give it an equal height and width of 45 pixels, a border radius of 10 pixels, and justify the content to the center and also align the items to the center. Now for the actual icon that we will display, we will get it from iron icons. So we import iron icons from Expo Vector icons. Now in the function component, we will first return the styled view. And we will give it some extra style by changing the background color. For the value, we will fetch the background property from the props. Now inside the view, we will put our icon. And the name of the icon will be the icon property from the props as well. We will give it a fixed size of 25 and we will set the color of the icon to white. Now back in the transaction item, we import the transaction AVI to be used. So still in the left view, we'll use the transaction AVI and we'll give it a background property. This value will be fetched from the actor's background from the props. Also, we'll give it an icon property and the value will be fetched from the actor's icon from the props. After the transaction AVI, we'll make use of a regular view which we'll import from React Native. For the view, we'll style it to have a margin of 10 pixels at the left. Inside the view, we'll make use of our regular test. The value of the text will be the same as the title from the properties. For the text component, we will give it some extra styles by changing the color to secondary and also aligning it to the left. Also, we give it a margin at the bottom of 5 pixels. Right after that, we we'll make use of the small text component and the value of that will be the subtitle property. For that, we align it to the left as well and we we'll give it a color of gray dark. Also in the right view, we we'll make use of the regular text and the small text so we can copy what we just did here and paste it. For the regular text, we'll change the text align to right. And for the value, we'll change it to the amount property. 
Now for the small text, we'll change the text align to the right as well and the value will be the date property. Once we are done with that, we can go back to the transaction section and import the transaction item. Now in the transaction list, we'll pass the transaction item as the return value of the render item. While returning the value, we'll spread the item property on it. Now for the bottom part of the home page, we'll call it the send money section. So in the components directory, we'll create a directory for that. Now the first thing we'll do is to create the types for the data that we'll use in this section. So the first interface will be send money props. This will have an ID which is a number, among other attributes which are strings. It will also take an image property which will be of the image source type. So we import that from React Native. Now we'll create another interface for the send money section and that will take a data property which will be an array of the send money props that we will define above here. Now in the send money directory, we'll create the send money section. In the file, we set up a function component. Also, we import the colors and the regular and small text. Now we import the send money section props from the types and we assign it to the function component. Once we've done that, we can take in the props. Now for this section, we'll make use of a bottom sheet. So we need to install that. We will use reanimated bottom sheet and we need to install other dependencies as well. Now for TypeScript to be happy with us, in the babel.config file, we need to make some changes. Under the preset, we need to add a model for the Metro server. And also under plugins, we need to add a plugin for React Native Reanimated. Once we are done with that, we should be able to use the bottom sheet with no problems. Now back in the send money section, we import the bottom sheet from reanimated bottom sheet. Now in the function component, we can return that. Now this will require a reference value. So we import the useRef hook from React and then we use it to create a reference with an initial value of now. Now for the type of the reference, we'll pass the bottom sheet. Once we've done that, we pass it to the ref attribute of the bottom sheet. Now the next attribute of the bottom sheet will be the snap point. This will be an array of values, defining the points from the bottom of the screen where the bottom sheet will snap. For this, I'll make use of two snap points. Now the next property will be a border radius and we'll give it a value of 25. It will also take an initial snap property. This will determine the initial snap point of the bottom sheet and the value will be an index from the snap point. Now to be able to interact with touchables that we may use in the bottom sheet, we need to set enabled content tab interaction to false. Now the last property will be render content. This will take the value of a function which returns a React component to be rendered. So we call our function render content. Now in this function, we will need a few components. The first one will be a background. And this will be a simple view with a weight of 100%, a padding top of 15 pixels and a background color of white. We also need a row in the component and we'll call it send money row. This will have a flex direction of row. We justify the content by having a space between. We'll align the items vertically in the center. We'll give it a width of 100% and a pattern horizontal of 25 pixels. Lastly, we'll need a component to display a list of send money items. And this will be a flat list. This will also have a width of 100%, a flex of auto, and the minimum height will be 80%. And we'll also give it a pattern horizontal of 25 pixels. In addition to that, we will create a test button component, which will be a touchable opacity, but for now we will not style it. So back in the render content, the first thing we return is the background. Inside the background, we will have a send money row, and this will have a margin bottom of 25 pixels. Now in the row, we will make use of the regular text here to display send money to. Now we will further style it by giving it a font size and also a color of secondary. Right after that, we we'll make use of the text button component. In this component, we'll put the small text and it will have a value of add. We'll further style the small text by giving it a font weight of bold and also a color of tertiary. Now for the text button, we can just alert add on pressing it. Now back in the home component, we can import the send money section. After we import it, we can use it just below the transaction section. Now this will also require some data from us. We should have the structure of the type that we declared. So we'll create an array and call it send money data. In this, I'll put some objects containing sample data. Now we need images for each of the data items. And in the portrait directory under assets, I have a few images there. So I will import them and assign it to the objects. Once we've done that, we can pass it to the send money section through the data property. Now back in the send money component section, we need to display the list. So we use the send money list component and the first property will be data. And this will take the data value from the props. Next, we'll start the content container and align the items to the start of the component. We want this to be a vertical list, so we set the default which is horizontal to false. Now we also don't want to show the vertical scroll indicator, so we set that to false. Now in the list, we want our number of columns to be 3, so we set the value as well. The next thing we'll do is to extract a key from the items, just like we did earlier on. 
Now the last property will be render item and this will require us to present a component which will be rendered for each item. So we create a send money item component. In the file, we set up a function component. The types of the function will be the send money props, so we import it from the types. Now we need to create a container component and that will be a touchable highlight. For this, we will give it a height of 130 pixels and for the width, we will calculate it to be 27% of the screen width. So we need to import the screen width from the shared file. Now we'll give it a pattern of 10 pixels, give it some border radius and also justify the content by having a space around it. Now we'll give it a margin of 0 at the top, 10 at the right, 10 at the bottom and 0 at the left. Now we need to import our colors and also the regular and small text. In addition to that, we import the profile components from the header section. Once we are done with that, in the component, we'll first return the send money item container. Now because this is a touchable highlight, we need to give it an underlay color and we will set it to secondary. Also through the style property, we will give it a background color which will come from the props. And on pressing the button, we can just say send money. Now in the container, we will open up a fragment and in the fragment, we will first use the profile component. This will take an image property which will come from the props. Also we will start the container of the image a bit and we will give it a margin bottom of 10. Now after that, we will make use of the small text here and this value will be the name property. We will give it some extra styles by aligning the text to the left, giving it a color of white and also a font size of 12. Once we are done with that, we make use of the regular text component. This will take its value from the amount property and we will also style it a bit by giving it a color of white, aligning the text to the left and a font size of 13. Once we are done like so, we can go back to the send money section and import the send money item and use it. We use it by passing it as a return value to the render item and we spread the item properties on it. Once we have this, we move to the next screen which will be the balance screen. In the screens directory, we will create a file for balance. In this file, we will set up a function component. And for now, we just return a fragment. Now we head to the rootstack file and import the balance screen. Once we've done that, we add it to our rootstack param list. But now instead of undefined, we need to assign it to the card props. This is because when you move to your balance screen, it means that you've clicked on a card and we need to display the details of the particular card. So we import the card props from the types file which can be found in the cards directory under components. Now in the stack navigator, we'll create another screen. The screen will have a name of balance and the component will be the balance component. Now we'll give it an options property which will have a value of a function returning an object. Now in the function parameter, we the structure route. With this route variable, we should be able to access any data that was passed while moving to the balance screen. So with this, when we look at the structure of our card details, we have an alias, which is a name that we assign to the cards. So on the balance page, we want to use that name as the title of the page. So we set the header title to the route.params.alias. We can avoid any undefined errors by making use of the question marks. Also, we align the header title to the center. Now for the back button that will be displayed, when we actually navigate to the balance screen, we want to change it to a custom one. So using the header back image property, we we'll assign it to a function. And this function will have the props parameter. Now for the image that we we'll use, it will be an icon that we import from Ion Icons. So we import that from Expo Vector Icons. Now in the function, we we'll make use of the icon. The name of the icon we want is Chevron Back. And we we'll give it a size of 25 and a color of secondary. Once we are done with that, we can also spread the properties on the icon. Now we adjust the container for the left side of the header by giving it a pattern left of zero. Now we need to ensure that we've exported the root stack param list as we'll be using it in the other screens. Also we need to set the initial route name to the balance screen so that for now we'll see the output of the screen. Now in the balance screen, we import the colors and also the container components from the shared file. Based on the container, we'll create a balance container and this will have a background color of gray light. We'll give it a weight of 100% a pattern of 25 and a flex of 1. Now the component will return the balance container and in the container we'll have a status bar with a style of dark. Now because we'll be accessing parameters from the route when we navigate to this page, we need to type the screen component. So we import the root stack param list from the root stack and also we need the stack screen props from the stack navigator. Once we've done that, we'll create a type and call it props. This will make use of the stack screen props and we'll pass the root stack param list as a variable and also the name of the current screen which is balance. Once you've done that, we can assign the props type to the function component and we can successfully destructure the route. Now let's create the types for the components on this page. So under components, we create a balance directory and create a types file. In the types file, the first interface will be amount props. This will just have a property of the balance which will be a number. 
The next one will be a balance card props. This will be the card that will be displayed on the balance screen. But as we've seen earlier, it will be exactly the same as the card props that we have. So we import the card props from the types file in the cards directory. And once we have that, our balance card props can extend it. Now in the balance directory, we'll create the amount section component. This will be a function component and it will make use of the amount props that we just created. So we import it from types and then we assign it to the function component. Now we need to create an amount section background, which will be a view. This will have a flex of 1, a width of 100% and also a padding at the top of 5 pixels. We also align the items in it to the center. Now this will make use of the colors and also the regular and small text components. So in the function component, we will first return the created background. And the first child will be the small text, which will have a value of total balance. Now we will start the text by giving it a color of secondary and also a margin at the bottom of 15. Next, we will make use of the regular text component. But this will have a value of the actual balance, which we can get from the props. Also, we precede the balance with a dollar sign. For the text, we will style it to have a color of secondary as well and increase the font size to 28. Now on the balance screen, we can import the amount section and use it just below the status bar. But this will expect a balance value. So for that, the value will be the balance property from the route params. And to prevent any undefined errors, we will make use of the question mark here. Now the next section will be the balance card itself. So we create another component and call it balance card section. In a file, we create a function component for the balance card section. Now the properties of this component will have the type of the balance card props. So we import that from the types and we assign it to the function component. Now the first thing we do is to create a background for the section. This will be a view with a flex of 2, a width of 100% and we align the items in the center. The flex of 2 will ensure that it will take twice the space of the amount section. Now for the actual card, it will be almost the same as the card item that we had on the home screen. So we create a balance card component and copy all the contents in the card item and paste it there. Starting from the top, we will get rid of the screen width input and then we will change the width of the card background to 100%. Now we will get rid of the card touchable as we will not need it. Now for the import, instead of the card props, we import balance card props. Once we are here, we change the name of the component to balance card and we update the type for the function component and the export as well. Now we get rid of the card touchable which we are not using. Since we are not using the touchable, we don't need the handle press function as well. Finally, we add our comments to prevent any undefined errors. Now back in the balance card section, we import the balance card that we just created. Now in between the section background, we use the balance card and then we spread the properties on it. Now back on the balance page, we import the balance card section. Now right below the amount section, we make use of the balance card section. Now as properties to the balance card section, we will spread the routes.params. And once again, we make use of the question mark to prevent any undefined errors. The last part of the balance screen will be a button and we will create a component called button section. The button section will be a function component and we need to import the regular button and the colors. Also, we will make use of iron icons which we will get from expo vector icons. Now, the first component that we will create will be a section background. This will have a width of 100%, we will align the items to the center and have a flex of 1. In the function component, we will return the section background and in the section background, we will make use of the regular button. This will have a value of cancel. And also we'll add the iron icon. This will have a name of card, a size of 17 and a color of white. Now for the button component, we'll style it by giving it a weight of 50% and I'll press attribute to have a function doing nothing for now. Now back on the balance page, we we'll import our button section and we'll put it just below the balance card section. Now if you've noticed, the card is a bit off to the left side of the screen. This is because of some extra margin to the right in the balance card component. So getting rid of it should fix it and position the card in the center of the screen. That is a downside of copying and pasting. Now we need to set up the navigation properly for the screens. So starting in the root stack file, we need to ensure that our initial screen is the welcome screen. Now on the welcome screen, we need to set up the navigation types for the screen. So just like we did for the balance screen, we need to import the root stack param list and also the stack screen props. Once we have that, we define a props type, which will be assigned a stack screen props and we'll pass it the root stack param list and also the name of the screen, which is welcome. Once we have that, we assign the props to the function components. Now in the component parameter, we can destructure navigation. Once we have that, we can assign that to the regular button to navigate to the home screen. Now we copy the import here since we'll be doing the same on the home screen. So all we need to change here is the name of the screen from welcome to home. Once we've done that, we pass it to the function component. 
but for the home type props, we will need it outside the home component, so we export it. Now we move to the card items component, where it will be needed. So in the card item component, when we press on the card, we want to navigate to the balance screen. So to be able to do that, we make use of the use navigation hook from native React navigation. Now we need to tell TypeScript where we are navigating from. That's why we exported the home props. So over here, we import the props from the home screen. While importing, we can make use of the alias here to refer to the props as home props. So now down in the component, we'll declare the navigation variable and we'll assign it to the use navigation hook. Now to type the use navigation, we'll pass it the home props here. And making use of an array index, we'll specify that the navigation prop of the home screen should be used for this navigation hook. And this will make TypeScript happy since it now knows where we are navigating from. So now in the handle press property, we can safely use the navigation to navigate to the balance page. While moving to the balance page, we need to spread our properties as well. This should make it possible to move to the balance page and display the details of the card. Now note that the full source code will be available on my Patreon and I have other helpful tutorials that you can check out. Select one of the videos on your screen and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.